not too shabby with the gas gun. Hey there, and welcome back. Now, if you're into long range precision rifle shooting, stick around because I think we've got a really fun video in the works here for you. I guarantee we've all spent quite a bit of time thinking about this, probably asking your buddies and debating. When it comes to long range precision rifle shooting, would I rather have a bolt gun or an auto loader to make those hits out of distance? So I thought, what a great topic for a video. I've got two very capable packages here. I've got some beautiful weather, I got some long distance, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to put these side by side and to show you exactly what I'm able to do with each of these packages out at distance. So for the video, we're gonna be shooting 6.5 Creedmoor, which is a very capable, very accepted long range cartridge. And that's really gonna allow us to focus on what are we able to do with each of these rifles. So that said, I guarantee we've all heard, bolt gun is what you want if you want accuracy at distance. Auto loader is what you want if you can sacrifice a little bit of accuracy, but you need that speed in making those hits. So I'm not exactly sure what to expect. I've never really shot these side by side for a head to head comparison. I do have a ton of time on each rifle, so I'm very confident in the zero and their capabilities out at distance. But I thought what a great opportunity to show you what I'm able to do with each rifle, show you a little bit of footage downrange of how effective we are with each of them, and then summarize at the end of the video and give you my thoughts on maybe where each of these rifles make sense when it comes to long range precision rifle shooting. So that said, what's in store in the video? Well, shortly after this, we're gonna move into a detailed gear review just to give you a look at what we're shooting here as far as rifles, optics, ammo, etc. So after the gear review, then we'll move down to 100 yards where we'll fire five round groups and give you a look at the zero and what these are capable of as far as accuracy at 100 yards. I think that's a great place to look at the accuracy of a rifle. We'll see how they stack up head to head. Then I thought it would be fun to put my plate out there at about 500 yards and do a little bit of a speed test throw a handful of rounds down range and see how fast I can make hits with the auto loader versus how fast can I make hits at distance with the bolt gun. I also thought it would be really fun if we go into maybe a PRS or NRL style shooting stage where I put up multiple targets at multiple distances and run through them maybe from a little bit of a positional shooting, prone shooting, see how they stack up maybe in a simulated PRS type stage. And then the final thing I think we'll do is stretch these out to an extreme distance for 6.5 Creedmoor. So I wanna push these over 1200 yards and see how these stack up for accuracy out there at extended distance for 6.5 Creedmoor. If you like the sounds of that, stick around from here. Let's move into the gear review and give you a look at what we're shooting. So before we start shooting, let's take a quick look at the rifles we'll be running in the video. For an auto loader, I'm gonna be running my Knight's Armament, SR25 and 6.5 Creedmoor. This rifle runs the ECC lower with the 6.5 Knight's upper, so it's a complete Knight's rifle, and it's paired with the Knight's CRS suppressor. As far as this rifle, I'm probably pushing a thousand rounds on it. I'm very confident in the rifle and its capabilities to shoot at distance. I think this thing is gonna stack up really well against a bolt gun. As far as an optics package, I'm running the Knight Force 5 to 25 Attacker F1 scope with a Tremor 3 reticle. Love that reticle because it allows me to zero and then hold in the reticle to make my hits at distance versus having to use the knob. So you'll see that when I'm running the Tacticam, really slick setup makes it really easy to shoot at distance in my opinion. As far as accessories on the rifle, I've got the B5 Precision Stock, Magpul Grip, Geisley SDE two-stage flat trigger. I really think that's a great upgrade to make this rifle really, really easy to shoot. Love shooting that flat trigger. On the forearm, you can see I've got roughly two pounds of additional M-lock weight on the forearm. I put that on just to help make the rifle a little bit more stable when shooting at distance and to help soak up some of that recoil to make it easier to make follow-up shots. And a bipod, I'm running the AccuTac bipod. Love this thing, this is a super sturdy setup. As far as a bolt gun, what are we gonna be running? I'm gonna use my Barrett MRAD with a 6.5 Creedmoor barrel installed. This rifle, I'm probably pushing 500 rounds on it. Very happy with the performance that I get out of the rifle. It's worth noting, I will not be running this suppressed. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably know the can I run on this. I actually got a baffle strike on, so it's currently back at Surefire getting repaired. So we're gonna be running unsuppressed, which I don't think will impact anything as far as downrange performance. So not exactly apples to apples as far as suppressed versus unsuppressed, but I don't expect that to make any impact to the performance and the outcome at the end of the video. 
As far as an optics package, we're going to be running the Night Force Attacker F1 7 to 35 scope with a Tremor 3 reticle. Yes, I've got a little bit more magnification in this scope, but I rarely, if ever, use that much magnification. So when we shoot our 100 yards groups, I will make sure I don't go above 25 power. And then when I shoot at a distance, I don't use that much power anyway. So that will not be an advantage that we'll need to factor in. As far as accessories on this rifle, it is a stock MRAD, no changes to the rifle itself. Obviously I have the Surefire two port brake. I have roughly two pounds of M-Lock weight added to the forearm, just like I do on the Knight's rifle, again, to help soak up some of that recoil and make it more stable when shooting at distance. And I'm also running an AccuTac bipod. Again, very happy with this bipod. I think it makes for a great long range package. As far as ammo, what am I gonna be shooting? So I'm gonna be shooting hand loads out of each of these rifles. These are hand loads that I've developed for each of the rifles, so I think it's a very fair comparison. Both of them are gonna be running the 130 ELDM bullet. The Knight's rifle is running about 2,800 feet per second, just shy of it. And the Barrett AMRAD is gonna be running right at 2,900 feet per second. So I'm able to push this a little bit faster and still feel comfortable in the pressure that I'm getting out of the rifle. So same bullet, but about 100 feet per second faster out of the MRAD. Now the one thing I'm not sure of, I developed this load with the can on, so I don't know what removing the can is exactly going to do to the performance of the rifle. I don't expect it'll make any real difference, but it is worth noting the load was developed with the can. We're going to be shooting unsuppressed. So with that, let's move down to 100 yards and see how we stack up for accuracy. So let's kick things off with a 100 yard accuracy comparison. I'm going to put five rounds out of the SR25 on the top dot, and then we'll do the same with the Barrett. Beautiful group. Wait till you see that up close. Now we'll do the Barrett. Here's five rounds out of the MRAD 6.5 Creedmoor at 100 yards. Scope is set to 25 power, so I'm equal with the Knight's Armament. And I'm shooting the same 130 grain ELDM bullet. So let's give five rounds a go. Pretty solid five round group out of the MRAD. Let's go down and take a look. So here we are taking a close up look at the groups we just shot at 100 yards. We put five rounds from the SR25 on the top dot. And as you can see, it measures just under an inch center to center. Maybe call that three quarter inch. So that's a really solid group. Five rounds from the MRAD down below. You can see here, we're basically an inch center to center. With a bit of horizontal spread, typically that's on the shooter. When I was shooting, the dot in the black was my first round, and the next four stacked over here. So I am going to bump that to the right a tenth, and let's go shoot steel. So overall, I'm happy with the performance out of each rifle. So how about a little speed test? To do that, I've put a 10-inch circle out at 570 yards. I've got five rounds loaded up in the MRAD. We'll run through those, and then we'll put five rounds through the SR25. I'll put a little clock on screen. We'll see how fast I can do it. There's basically zero wind out here right now, so I'm going to hold dead on. And I'm going to go as fast as I can accurately fire. So this is a 2.8 mil hold, 10 inch plate. I'm on about 15 power. Here we go. Impact. 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 So that was five rounds, 10 inch plate. Not too shabby with a bolt gun. Now let's try the SR25. Now let's use the SR25 to put five rounds on the 10 inch plate, 570 yards, as quickly as we can, accurately. I'll run a counter on the screen so you can see how long it takes this rifle versus the bolt gun. 
Now wind is pretty much dead calm, so I'll hold dead on. Elevation on this rifle is 3.3. So here we go. Scope is on 14 power. Ooh, off the left edge. Impact. So that first round went off the left edge. Then I put the next four into a pretty solid group on the plate. So you should be able to see on the GoPro how well that worked. Ooh, off Impact. the left edge. Impact. 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 So the next thing I want to do is run through a match type stage with each of these rifles. Now you'll notice I pulled the suppressor off of the SR25 and I did that because I wanted to get an apples to apples comparison of how the two rifles handle with a little bit of movement and multiple target transitions. So what am I going to be shooting at? To your right and my left, there's a six inch square at 310 yards. And then down behind me in the valley, there's a 45% IPSC and a 10 inch circle at 530 yards, a two thirds IPSC at 710 yards, and then a full size IPSC at 1,005. My goal is gonna be to run through each of those targets from near to far, getting one round impact and then transitioning. It's worth noting the wind right now is crazy. It's kind of coming in this direction. So from the screen, from your right to your left, I'm guessing 15 to 20 miles an hour. So pretty crazy. I'll be fighting that as I'm shooting. As I move down to the longer targets though, the wind becomes less of a crosswind and transitions more to be in line with the direction I'm shooting. So there's gonna be a lot going on as I run through these targets. I'm gonna speak as best I can to what I'm shooting at. Let's give it a go and I'll summarize at the end. All right, six inch square, 310. The wind's ripping pretty good. I'm gonna go 1.1 elevation and right to the 10 mile an hour mark. Impact, see? All right, get a pair of targets, 530 yards. At three mils. Yeah, and that wind's ripping pretty good. Let's go right to the 10 mile an hour mark. Impact. Impact. All right. Let's transition to that. There we go, two thirds zipstick at seven, ten, that's 4.8, right at the eight mile an hour wind dot. Impact. There's the light, full size zipstick, right at a thousand, nine mils. Let's go eight. Mile an hour wind dot. Off that right edge. Cut it back. Impact. Not a bad run with the gas gun. As you can see, we made hits all the way out from 310 to right at 1,000 yards pretty quickly and easily. Now let's try it with the bolt gun. All right, six inch square, 310. Gonna be 0.9 mils. Hold right to the eight mile an hour wind dot. Impact. Impact. All right, pair of targets at 530. So that's 2.5, and I'm going to go 6 mile an hour wind dot, 8 mile an hour. Impact. 
Infinite circle. Impact. Infinite dipstick. 710. This is 4.2. I'm going to go six miles an hour. Cut right edge, eight mile an hour. Impact. Full size zipstick. Thousand. Seven point six. And I'm going to go. Eight on our wind dot. Off that upper right shoulder. Come down. Got my wind back just a smidge. One mil. Low right. Impact bottom of the plate. Let's send one more. Impact. So not too bad with the MRAD. Both rifles are very capable. So this ought to be pretty fun. Full size Zipsic out there at 1,340 yards. We're pushing the boundaries on the 6.5 Creedmoor with a 130 grain ELDM bullet, but I want to see how the bolt gun compares to the gas gun at this kind of distance. So full size Ipsic. And wind is pretty calm. I'm going to favor left one mil. Elevation on this rifle is 13.2 mils. I'm not going to run the Tacticam on this because the field of view of the scope will not fit in the Tacticam where I'm holding. So I would be holding outside the window. I took it off. I've got the GoPro running. So here we go. Hopefully we can make a first round hit. One mil left, 13.2 mils elevation. Elevation was good. Windage appears to be dead on. So let's hold dead on 13.2. Just off that right shoulder, left edge hold, impact, the left edge hold, off the right edge, increase my wind just a little bit. Impact. Impact. So three out of six at 1340 with the MRAD. Not too shabby. Let's see how the gas gun does. Now let's do the same thing with the SR25. Six rounds loaded up, 130 grain ELDM. This rifle calls for 14.5 mils. We're running a little bit slower, so need more elevation to get out there. I'm gonna go ahead and send them real quick while the target is still in the sun. I'm gonna favor left edge, just like we did with the MRAD. 14.5 on this first round. Let's see where we're at. Ooh, quite a bit low. So I need to come up to about 15.2. Wind did look good. Impact. Just off the bottom edge. Impact. Impact. 
impact. So I believe that was four impacts with the gas gun. I don't know about you, but that is super impressive shooting out of both of these rifles. It's worth noting, per the app, this rifle was going subsonic at this distance, so we're losing a lot of consistency, but as you can see, four out of six is not too shabby, 1,340 yards with a 6.5 gas gun. Looks like we've got some nasty weather rolling in, so I wanna take just a couple of quick minutes here at the end of the video and summarize my experience running the Barrett MRAD side by side with the SR25 in different long range scenarios. Now, as I run through what we saw, I'd love to hear in the comments how you felt like these rifles stacked up. Were you surprised by the performance out of either one of these rifles? Is this what you expected? Let me know. I can't wait to read and get your opinions on what you saw. Now that said, I know we've all heard the saying that bulk guns are what you want if you're looking for accuracy and auto loaders are what you need if you want speed, but you can sacrifice a little bit of accuracy. To test that, I decided to move down to 100 yards and shoot a pair of five round groups out of each rifle. Those five round groups really impressed me. What I saw is both rifles were easily capable of laying down one MOA or better groups. I'm happy with a rifle regardless of what I'm gonna be using it for if I'm capable of one MOA or better repeatedly. Out of the SR25, we saw this rifle lay down a group right at 0.75 MOA, so beautiful. And then we saw the MRAD lay down a group right at one MOA. And that was due to one round that flew just a little bit outside of the bulk of the group. But overall, very impressive performance out of each rifle. I cannot say that the bolt gun outperformed the autoloader. I really felt like they both held their own. And as you can see, modern quality autoloaders are very capable of great accuracy. I felt like that accuracy was exactly what we needed to be able to run through the rest of the video. So overall, I would say it's a tie between accuracy potential or accuracy capability. Really happy with both rifles. From there, we moved out to a little bit of a speed test where I had the 10 inch plate about 500 yards and we fired five rounds as fast as we could accurately. Now that is where we definitely saw the advantage go to the autoloader. Now with the autoloader, I missed with that first round, likely due to a windage error but then I connected with the next four in about 10 seconds total. The MRAD, I connected with all five rounds, but it took me about 15 seconds. So a five second advantage through five rounds on a 10 inch plate at 500 yards, in my opinion is huge. And is definitely where something like an auto loader shines. Great performance out of this rifle, very happy with it. The MRAD, maybe I could have gone a little bit faster, but I really couldn't, I was trying my best. So definitely advantage speed to the auto loader. The next thing we did was run through a long range match type stage where I had multiple targets from 300 yards all the way out to about a thousand. Shot off the back of the four wheeler, transitioned down to a prone position. What I noticed in that, I wasn't really going for speed or anything like that, although it did definitely play a factor. But this MRAD or these bolt guns are big, heavy, and bulky. So a little bit awkward to get on the back of the four wheeler, get into position, then transition down to prone just because of the weight and the heft of this rifle. I felt like the SR25 really maneuvered very well, especially given that I had removed the can so it wasn't as front heavy. And then I really like this SR25 as I move through the different positions because you don't have to work the bolt. You don't have to break position to work that bolt. Definitely that's just something you have to put up with a bolt gun and through practice and training, it's no problem, but I really like the fact that you can just control recoil, hold the bag, and move on to that next shot. The next thing is where I was really surprised. 1,340 yards, 50% hit percentage out of each rifle. I fully expected the MRAD with the higher muzzle velocity to have a higher hit percentage, 1,340 yards. That just wasn't the case. Both of these performed really well, and I believe that just shows how capable modern autoloaders can be from an accuracy perspective. Great performance, I was really impressed with this rifle, it really shocked me. So 1,340 yards, this rifle was starting to transition into that transonic and subsonic velocity range. So great shooting out of this rifle, I was very happy with that. It's hard for me to say that one outperformed the other because the hit percentage says they were equal. Now, that's all we did for shooting. Let's move into just a couple of quick thoughts that I have for these rifles. Where do these rifles make sense? For a bolt gun in my fleet, I feel like they make sense in Magnum calibers, something like 300 PRC, 300 Norma, 338 Lapua, that's where I really like this rifle. Magnum calibers, 
And if you're looking for something that is just flat out easy to shoot accurately, these bolt guns, you get into position, you pull the trigger, that's where the bullet's gonna go. An auto loader, I've shot these for years. I've got a ton of rounds through these and a ton of time in practice. You really have to work to be able to shoot these accurately. You have to control that rifle through the recoil impulse. You have to control your trigger well. It takes practice to shoot these accurately. I like this rifle because you don't have to break position to shoot, so it's really nice for follow-up shots and for speed to be able just to pull the trigger, let it off through reset, and then send that next round without breaking your position. This, to me, is just more fun. I enjoy shooting autoloaders, especially accurate AR-type rifles. To me, they're a lot of fun to shoot. So fun factor for me goes to the autoloader. If you're looking for something like a long-range match rifle, it's kind of a toss-up. Definitely with the ease of shooting, that's where the bulk ends make sense. Like I mentioned, these things are very, very easy to shoot well. So I think that's a lot of the reason that you see these dominating the match scene. So in summary, as I mentioned, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What did you see? What did you take away? Also, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around. This was a long video, but I really enjoyed getting to make it and share it with you. If you enjoy this kind of content, hit me with that comment, drop a like. And if you want to join me on the journey of growing this channel, I'd really appreciate a subscribe. It's your engagement that's going to help me grow this channel. I've got a ton of really fun stuff in the works. And I'd love it if you'd join me along the way. So that said, I appreciate you sticking around. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. It's a great place to us engage and interact, give you a sneak peek of what I'm working on. But stick around. We've got more cool videos in the works, and I can't wait to share them with you. So thank you.